Well, just make yourself at home. is right here down underneath so that solves all of my clearance problems and it's still gonna look decent too so now all I have to do is extend this track and reconnect back up there I'll probably have to cut another piece because I'm sure I lost a little bit of length because of the the radius increased down at this end so Welcome to Otter Creek in Rio Grande, where we're still working on the staging yard. But I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Hopefully, you know, before the end of this week, I will have it completed. So stick around and see what I do next. car train on there just to kind of see how things were going to work out and I've got this in here you can see they're pretty close uh, well within standards and I've got another car down at the far end there uh, same thing so this is 10 cars so on my top staging track I guess that'd be staging track one depending on how you want to look at it I've got room for at least 10 cars, which is what, you know, I was thinking was going to be uh, how it was going to work out, that I'd have room for more than 10 cars on each of the staging tracks. So uh, that first one is in, and I think as I progress with the next five, I think it would be prudent of me to go ahead and get at least three chunks of track, three sections, solder together straight and, and see if I have enough length to do everything. That way I'm only, you know, messing around with uh, rail joiners on any kind of radius, and even then I shouldn't be, at the end of each ladder. 
So I'm gonna do that. It might take four, four tracks, I don't know. And then, you know, I'm gonna do my best to center one of those tracks over my seam there. And then when it comes time to take it apart, I'll go in with a Dremel and do it that way. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. After some sleep and a couple of cups of coffee, I decided against soldering all of the track together and then putting it in. I, I would have ended up having to do all of that twice. So instead what I did is I straddled where I'm gonna separate the two halves with a full section of track so that I've got equal distance to each side. And then I just made sure everything was at the two inch spacing that I wanted and then just, you know, made everything nice and tight where I needed it to be on each end of the layout and I'm confident that when I do solder these things together, that all I will have to do is, you know, overlap, overrun here, and cut off what's needed on each end of the yard ladder. So I'm feeling pretty good about how it's going. Uh, I did have one snarl, and that was these two turnouts here. I don't know if, if I got confused from my original plan, you know, and taking everything apart, and bringing everything here, if I got these two turnouts swapped from each other, but I ended up having to take them out and, and swap them. The, the tangent remained the same, but instead of this turnout being back here, it really threw this track way too far to the left and my spacing was terrible. So I swapped them out and I ended up with this geometry, which turned out really good. It's actually better than the rest. But, you know, all, all, all this is brand new to me. And regardless of what you do in your com computer assisted drawing program, when you actually start putting things together and saying this is permanent, things change. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all of this stuff here and start working on my storage yard and my engine tracks. All right, you're taking a look at the storage yard and you can see I've got three tortoises that are gonna be in real close conjunction with each other. And there's a couple things that I'm, I'm reconsidering. You know, when I originally laid this all out, again, I'm not 100% sure what happened, but you know, this over here changed, and then somehow or another, I'm short one of the number eight turnouts that I originally had in here, because I took pictures to help remind me, but apparently they didn't do me any good, because somehow I still ended up with stuff like impossible to recreate. Uh, so here's the deal is from here on out that way, those are all number sixes. And then these up here, these two switches are number eights. And you can see the parallel track that you get coming out of a number eight is, I think it's like an inch and a quarter which is less than the inch and seven sixteenths that I've already proved you can't have two locomotives side by side each other. So that's not gonna work right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and build two number sixes, uh, and a left, maybe two lefts and a right. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, for sure I'm gonna build two lefts and see what that looks like and and hopefully get this sorted out because it's <laughs> it's taken a lot more time than what I'd hoped it would. I thought I'd go ahead and and share some yard ladder experience <laughs> if you want to call it that. 
So there's, there's a known distance, at least there should be, of how far your diverging route should go before it creates the proper distance between the next parallel track. And, and I'm sure that that distance is different for a number eight, a number six, five, four, so on and so forth. I did not know what any of that was when I began this. I did try and find out information on that, but I'm a terrible researcher. Uh, just at the risk of going on a rant, I, I despise searching for anything because the first 10 hits you get are just advertisements. Uh, it, it's just a pain that I hate. And if I can't find it in the first, you know, four or five attempts, I throw my hands up in the air and, and go on to something that I can do a little easier. Uh, that being said, the only way that these two turnouts ended up working, butted straight up to that one, is because I ended up with a radius out here so that this track could move away from that track and then this track could move away from that track, so on and so forth. So I, actually I got kind of lucky that this worked out the way it did. Let's take a look at the other end. So on this end, you can see I've got a two inch spacer block here, a two inch spacer block here and another one over here. So when I made my number sixes, I, I mistakenly did not leave enough track on either end. So, you know, if you watch, if, if you happen to be someone who's thinking about making use of fast tracks, I highly recommend it. They're, they're a great tool. It's not that terribly difficult to do. And, you know, without divulging too much, I've purchased my jigs, at least two of my jigs, just in the creation of my staging yard. You know, if you were to add up how much each one of these turnouts would have cost to, to purchase uh, manufactured by some other entity, uh, it would be a sum of money that would equal at least two of my fast tracks jigs. And I haven't even got it started on the rest of the layout. So I, I think it's a fairly economical way of doing business as well uh, if you're going to do a large layout. Uh, enough said about that. So when I, when I created these number fives, I didn't leave enough length on either end of the turnout uh, to make it work with a two inch spacing. So long story short, I'm gonna have to create about a two inch chunk of track right in here on these two turnouts in order for the diverging route to leave at a distance that I want. So, you know, live and learn. I'm gonna measure though, after I get it all hooked up, I'm gonna probably measure from the frog to the frog and that should give me total distance that I need to know.
got the six parallel staging tracks, storage tracks, marked out. And this will better illustrate what I was uh, talking about previously. And that's your diverging route. The distance between these two tracks is not correct for a two inch spacing. So you have to bring this turnout further out to line up with this storage track. So, and, and you know, the, this is probably how you should do it is mark out your lines with the spacing you want. And then when you throw your ladder on there, you can clearly see what's going on before you get too far down the road. Unfortunately, I couldn't really do that with unknown radiuses in here. I just had to kind of go what the computer assisted drawing program told me I could get away with. And I did, but I'm just gonna say, I just barely got away with it. We need to talk. First of all, you're filthy. And I'm not 100% sure that that's not actually manure. Are you out in the cow pasture again? When we discussed your living conditions when you were forced to move out of the house, you promised that you would start producing some mice an atonement for the destruction of some of the things in the house. To date, probably nine months later, you've produced one mouse. One. So, doesn't look like you're gonna come inside the house anytime soon. storage yard and the engine yard are now complete, at least as far as the track laying portion goes. Uh, what I need to do next is go in and mark where all the track is going to be and then drill all my alignment holes for adding the tortoises at a later date. Once I get everything marked, I'm going to go in and figure out exactly where my feeder drops are gonna be for these center tracks here, because I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and drill those before I take everything up, because I will have to separate the two halves again from each other, flip this half over to install my tortoises. So I'm gonna get started doing that.
there it is, all complete. Got all the tortoises installed and run three cars through everything. No derailments, everything runs pretty smooth. All the tracks, I would say, uh, fairly well permanent in place now. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged, I think it's gonna work pretty nice. Now, down at this end, I attempted to swap these two turnouts out for each other, just swip swap them, because uh, I thought, well, I would get better spacing on these two tracks. And the problem with that is you end up with misaligned trackage down here that uh, just didn't really, I don't know, it didn't work for me. It, I could have made it work, but I think uh, getting the two inch spacing would have been a little more difficult because this track and that track wouldn't have come together until way out here. Uh, at any rate, if you, if you see this little pin right here, that track pin, that is kind of, I guess the yard limit. That's where I discovered that I was gonna start having uh, collisions with cars in the storage yard. And from there back, I, I had probably room for 13 cars. I, I, yeah, I could easily fit 10. I didn't see how many more I could get. But if you go all the way across here, and that's less than two inches there, you know, that's, uh, I don't know what it is, I didn't measure, but if you go all the way across from there, you can see that I'm gonna have room in there. And of course, you know, at some point, all of your tracks come together and will cause spacing problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this like it is. And I, I don't think it's gonna cause me any problems. If it does, then uh, I've, I've got another plan uh, that, that someone's helping me with. Uh, thanks, Scott. And if, if this doesn't work in, in testing, then I will uh, kind of redress what's going on here at a future date. But I'm gonna leave it for now and see how it works. This will be the last of the track work for a while. So I'm gonna end the video here and get started on doing some wiring probably going to be lots of videos on wiring, probably more videos on wiring than there was on the track work and, and the physical construction of staking. So yeah, if, that, if that's not anything that you're into or interested in, then I'll see you in a couple of months, I suppose. But uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.